guys travel a long way to be here with us this morning. We welcome you guys here. Make yourselves at home, fill your pockets with cake for the ride home. I'm not sure when you're heading back, but you know, it's great to have you here. We do water and sodas and stuff if you're heading out today. Um, yeah, I am Pastor Eric. I think a lot of you know me. Um, been in ministry for about 35 years now. A few weeks ago I said 30 years, and Tina said it's been 35 years. I'm like, really? Okay, it has been. So it's been about 35 years. Most of the time it's all volunteer type of stuff, so I did a lot of youth group ministry, a lot of teen ministry, young adult ministry, college level ministry, family ministry. I did pulpit supply in like 18 different churches throughout the years, in different, 18 different churches. And uh, for the last six and a half years I've been here um, as a pastor of this church. And uh, it's been a blessing to, to be here and uh, to do what we're doing here. Um, I think a lot of people might not know that I'm also a, a land surveyor. So I do property lines, boundary lines, stuff like that. Some of you know, some of you don't know that. Um, I've been surveying land, measuring the Earth's surface for about 38 years. Okay, so um, 28 years of that has been on my own. Um, you might be thinking, well, what does a surveyor do? I'll explain that. Um, I'll explain it right now and then we'll move forward. Um, so surveyors, yeah, let's pray, and then we'll get into this. I want to pray for us, and we'll uh, move forward. Father, we just thank you so much just for allowing us to be here this morning as a family. Father, we have folks that came here from all different areas, different backgrounds, different beliefs. And Father, we just thank you that we're all gathered here this morning. You brought us all here for some reason. That there's something that you want each and every person here this morning to hear. Father, I pray that we're open to it. We open our minds and our hearts to what we're about to hear. Father, I pray we don't just hear it, but we allow it to sink in. We marinate in it. Marinate it. We, we apply it to our lives today. Make changes where we need to make changes. And then we go and share it with those in our corner of the world. Father, I pray we don't leave what we hear today here. I pray we take it with us. Think about it. We thank you for this opportunity. Father, allow me to speak accurately and clearly the truth you've laid on my heart to share with this family this morning. Just let me get out of the way. Just speak to these people. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, surveyors. Um, why did I get into surveying? Um, I went to college for forestry, and surveying was my worst class in, in college. I, I, didn't, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say I hated it, but I didn't really care for it. Um, but that's where all the jobs were, so I ended up getting a job in surveying. But I did like surveying, and I used to love maps. I always loved maps, and that started in a church. Okay, I used to sit in the back row, back row Baptist, this is Baptist church, and, and the, I think most of our Bibles here do not have this in the back of their Bibles. Um, some of these do. There's a good news one over there that has this in the back. The other Bibles here are unknown. But a lot of Bibles, if you look in the back of your own Bible, you might find some maps in the back of the Bible. That's what really got me into survey. And it seems kind of strange that my pastor would be talking, doing the message, and I was really paying attention, but I could always double tax. So I'd sit back there, and I'd be reading through the maps. And I'd be looking at these maps, studying as I'm listening intently to the pastor. But I, I would learn about these maps. And there's, there's points about maps. There's two things you need to know about maps. Okay, one is, it is a, it's like a picture of a fact. Okay, so, and these facts come from two areas. So one fact that you would see in the maps in your Bible is facts that are measured on the ground. So if you look in the back of a Bible and if it has a map on it, you'll see the Tigris River, the Euphrates River, you'll see mountains, you'll see cities, and they still exist today. So somebody went out at some point in time and measured the location and um, the representation of these, the actual location of the lakes and rivers and cities and mountains, and they drew a map of it. It's a, it's a picture of a fact. Okay, And the other half of a map is... Um, a picture of written facts. Okay, so if you look on those maps, you'll also see where Paul took his journey. The, some of the good Bibles will show um, a journey at a different point in history where Paul went, or where the acts took place, the actions of the, the apostles, or where Jesus went on a certain route. You'll see that. And so it blends facts on the ground with facts from written word into a picture. Okay, and that's kind of what surveyors do. Okay, so I we back up a little bit. I take deeds. I take a deed. If you buy a house, you get a deed. There's an abstract. It's a, a, a bunch of deeds basically put together. It shows the history of your property. So um, I take the written, the bearings, and the distances, and I draw a map of that. So I take the bearings and distances. Your deed cannot change. That is fact. 
Okay, you can't wish you had more land and change your deeds so you have more land. You can't do that. Okay, it's a fact. And I draw a picture of that and I, I put it on the paper, and that's just outer bounds that you see here. And then inside there's some squiggly lines and there's some smaller boxes. This is a house and there's utility lines and there's the edge of the woods. So a map is written fact of actual um, a map of actual written facts, and then it is also field measurements. That's the other half. That's how they did it in maps in your Bible. That's how this is. So I actually go out in the field and then I try to combine the two. I take the written evidence with what I actually find in the ground and I draw a map. So if I draw a map, if I do a survey for you, and if you're pretty sure, you can guarantee me you built your garage on your own property, and I come out and I do the survey, I find the facts on the ground, and I find the fact that your garage is on your neighbor's property by a few feet. Um, no matter how much you wish your garage was not on your neighbor's property, no matter how much you know it's not on his property, no matter how much you try to force me to say it's not on the neighbor's property, it's on your neighbor's property. Okay, facts are facts. And that's how maps are. Um, and that's what survey maps show. And there's other, there's other, types, other types of maps. Um, the older folks probably know what these are. Younger folks may have never actually held them. This is a road map. On a road map, there are roads, okay? Um, the hardest part about a road map is folding it back up, so I'm not gonna unfold it further than this. Uh, but if you unfold a map, they're pretty tough to get back together. But they're very, very informative. Um, what is on a road map? Roads, okay? There's little lines. If you look at this road map, there's these little lines in different colors for different size roads, but they are facts, okay, right? The, the roads that are on this map, it's a fact. That road exists. And the way it's depicted on this map, that's where it is. You can't wish the road was somewhere else. So if I were to take this map right here, and if I were to say, oh, here's Route 3 on the map. Route 3 is right out in front of this church. That's awesome. I'm going to jump on Route 3, chosen on this map. I'm going to take Route 3 to Disney World in Florida. Sounds like a good plan, right? It's right out front. I can jump right down there. And we, can, we can start right after service. Okay, we can do this. What's the problem? Route 3 doesn't go to Florida. It starts in Plattsburgh and ends in Fairhaven. Okay, so that's not a good choice, right? The road goes where the road goes. I can't wish that Route 3 goes to Florida and it's going to go to Florida. Can't, I, I can't wish it. No matter how much I desire Route 3 to go to Florida, it's going to get you to Fairhaven and Plattsburgh. Okay, not going to get you where you want to go. That's the important thing is that um, with a map, it doesn't matter if it's a paper map or I know some of you might still be using Tom Tom or Garmin, as I understand. Um, some are using the apps on your phones, um, Google Maps, you might be using uh, some kind of map app. So no matter what you're using, map or electronic map, you have to know where you are. That's the most important thing. It will ask you, where are you? If you're using a paper map, you've got to find where you are. And back in the day, we'd be like pirates and we'd say, I'm here, that's where I am, and that's where I want to be. So we got to figure out how we're going to get to where we want to be. And so if you're using an electronic map, it'll tell you where you are right now. It'll ask you for that, and it'll say, where do you want to go? Okay, those are the two things you need to know. On this, you have to plan out of your route. You have to look at facts and figure out how to get from here to there. Um, the Garmin GPS, that'll tell you how to do that, right? The other thing about maps is, yep, it's a fact of an actual road on the ground. So you might be thinking, well, I don't need a map. I got some roads that I really like. So you might be thinking, well, I'm going to... I'm going to take Route 81 because Route 3 is okay, but it's like two-way traffic and there's stop signs and stuff and red lights and uh, I'm going to get hit head-on sometimes. So I like Route 81 because it's two lanes going each direction, biggest road in our area, which I know some people laugh at that, but it is two, two lanes going each direction. And I don't know if you know this, but you can do 65 miles an hour on Route 81. Like, no more than that, but you can do 65. I know Mike, Mike never goes over 65. But, uh, yeah, you can. So you can drive down this road, you can love Route 81. And just because you really love Route 81, you can stop, there's rest areas, you can buy coffee, you can use bathrooms to buy too much coffee, but they have spots along it. You can really love Route 81, but if you want to go to Florida, to Disney World, is it a good choice? No. no. Why? The road doesn't go there, right? Route 81 will get you to Tennessee, get you close. You can stop in and see Nathan Sheridan, but it's not going to get you um, to where you want to be. Why? The road goes where the road goes. You have facts on the ground that can't be changed. 
and you have facts written on a map that can't be changed. Okay, that's how maps are. Um, they only go where they go. And these roads on the ground, there's some interesting facts. I'm going to back up just a little bit. We'll point out some interesting facts about roads and maps. And you might think, well, I know these. These are basic. These are interesting. But we live in a society today where things that are very basic and very simple are becoming very confusing for some people. And, and we're being forced to um, look at them completely differently. But let's take a look at some basics of, of roads. Um, a road begins where it begins and it ends where it ends. You can't change that. Okay, and you can only get on a road if you're somewhere along that road. Okay, if I want to get on Route 3, I can, but I can't get on 81 from here, so you have to figure out where you are, where you need to be to get where you want to go, right? Um, if that road is going to take you to a place where you don't want to be, you shouldn't choose that road. So if you don't want to go to Fairhaven, don't choose Route 3 and follow it to the end. Pick a different road. Um, the cool thing is that's our choice. Okay, we can look at the map. We can look at roads in the ground. Let's think about the map. You can you can study it, and you can look at the facts, and you can understand if you want to go to Florida, don't take Route Three because it doesn't get you there. You have to go a different way. We can choose to look at actual facts to get where where we want to be. Where are you now? Where do you want to be? What do I need to do to get there? What are the, Choices I need to make to get where I want to be. It's so important. And life's the same way. We have so many options, so many choices, so many roads to take in life, so many crossroads. I know that all of us can sit here and talk about crossroads where we made a decision in life and something completely different would have happened if I chose a different path. When I first got out of um, high school, um, I had the Coast Guard recruiters came and I went to Buffalo and I took the exam to become an um, officer in the Coast Guard, and I did good. I had the option to go and be an officer and go on to Cape Beta training. I had that option. That same week, I was offered a full-time position at a pizza, pizza store, which I worked at while I went to college, and they wanted to send me to Colorado Springs to run a store there. 19-year-old kid going to Colorado Springs. Sounds pretty tempting. Or I could go to Cape May, or I could go to forestry school and uh, be a forest ranger. So I had, you know, you get these crossroads and you get these points in your life where, where am I now? Where do I wanna be? Is this choice gonna get me where I wanna be? And no matter how old we are, we have those choices, but those young guys, uh, you guys and girls that are in, in school now, the ones that are just graduating, those are like real choices right now that you're probably making and you're facing. Um, and you've already made a lot of choices to get to the destination of graduation. Okay, and so graduation was your destination. You have to go to school and you have to take a certain amount of classes and you have to do certain things. You have to choose the right roads to get to the destination of graduation. Okay, and for a lot of us that have graduated already, we know that well we're on one, um, well we're heading towards one destination, we have other destinations in mind as well. So graduation is our first destination. Next, we might want to go to college. We might want to get this job. We might want to join the service. What do we have to do? So a lot of times, we have to make decisions where we are today um, to not only get to where we want to be, but to set us up on firm ground to get to the next destination. So it's important stuff. One, one thing rolls, rolls off the next. Um, nowhere near these notes, but that's okay. <laughs> a lot of us might find ourselves in that position today. Okay, if you're a graduate, maybe you already know um, what your plans are for the future. Maybe you already have a job all lined up. Um, I know some folks are going to join the military. I know some folks are going to go to trade school. Some folks might take a little time and just breathe and uh, just relax for a little while before you figure out what your destination really is. My advice would be don't take too much time to sit and breathe because sometimes um, we sit and relax and that gets comfortable. And uh, I've got friends and things that uh, are still sitting and relaxing, trying to figure out what they're gonna do when they grow up. I don't know what I'm gonna do when I grow up yet, but we find a destination and we work towards that goal um, constantly. We're constantly picking and choosing um, the next road to take, the next choice to make. But maybe that's where you find yourselves today. Um, 
figuring out where, what your destination is, where you want to go next. Before you know where you want to go next, you really got to know where you are right now. Like, where am I right now, really? What am I standing on? What's important in my life? What should be important in my life? And why am I doing what am I doing right now? Why, why am I doing that? Am I on a good road? We have to understand where we are now before you even think about a destination. Then once you get those two points, now you can figure out how to get there. So we take a good hard look at where we are. And if I sat down with each one of you at, at Dunkin', if we sat down over coffee, I would probably tell you to go to McDonald's anyway. I like their coffee better, it's a little bit cheaper. So we're sitting at McDonald's over coffee, and, and you're, you're sharing with me, and this doesn't matter if you're a graduate or not. Okay, a lot of us go get coffee somewhere, and if it comes up in conversation, it's like, wh where do you see yourself in a year? Where do you see yourself in three years, in five years, in ten years? And it's good to have these plans for yourself. Um, where do you see yourself? It doesn't matter what age you are. Like, where do you think you're going to be? What do you think you're going to be doing? Who are you hanging with in a few years? Um, there's that old saying, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. And that's so true. Look at the people you're running with right now. Are they going to get you where you want to be in life? Um, things like that. So you're sitting there and, and, and you're talking to me and you're, you're telling me, you, you say, well, I might, I think I want a, some kind of decent career, something I'm interested in. If I'm going to spend the rest of my life doing something, um, I want it to be something I like. And first of all, don't think you're ever going to do something for the rest of your life. Because uh, you can talk to any adult in here, and we've changed our minds multiple times, and we've done different things. I've been serving for 38 years, but um, doing ministry, and I can do other things amongst that. Um, I might be abnormal in that. I think a lot of people switch careers more often than um, 38 years, but I'm doing ministry as well, so it's kind of two careers um, in one, if you will. But you, you might want this decent job with a decent pay. Okay, that's your choice. You, you want to do that. Or you might say, I want to be married sometime. I'm going to have kids. I want to buy a house. I'm going to get a pool and a hot tub and all this. I got stuff I want to do. I got. I want to live in a certain place. Um, I've got certain goals for myself. Okay, maybe, maybe you're telling me all that stuff. I want to go on vacation. I want to go exploring things. I want to see the world. Um, maybe you're thinking, you know, right now, I've heard a lot about God. I've heard a lot about Jesus. So I'm really seeking more. I really feel Him nudging me. I know a lot of young folks that take a year and they go on a mission trip somewhere. Maybe you want to go to the Dominican Republic and, and see, like, some real mission fields. Um, you know, I just was sharing with someone in the first service. Other countries are sending their teenagers to the United States to run our Christian camps because we don't have enough kids here willing to work in the Christian camps. So they're, those kids are coming as a ministry bringing Jesus to the United States. That's their destination, the United States, to do ministry. But what are we going to do? Maybe that's your goal, to, to draw closer to God, um, to, to know Jesus more. So as you tell me these ideas, or maybe you're thinking about these things right now, you got to understand. This might sound simple, but if, if you don't remember anything else today, you got to understand you need to know where you are. You need to know where you want to be, and you need, you need to know how to get there. Because that choice you make, that road that you set yourself down, it only goes where the road goes. Road only goes where the road goes. you got to remember that. Okay, Your choice will only take you where that choice goes. Sometimes, um, if we wanted to go to Florida, if we pull this map out and open it up so we see the whole picture, um, now you might be able to figure out how to get to Florida by using these facts, okay, by studying roads, by having a really good GPS. When you look at the big picture, it's very clear the path I need to take to get from here, Carthage, to Florida, to Disney World. It's very clear. There's no mistakes. It's all facts. Take this road, this road, this road, and you'll get there. Okay, sometimes in life, it's not that easy. Sometimes in life, you might think, well, I know I am right now. I've got a pretty good idea where I am, and I think I know where I want to be, and I actually know how to get there. I know what I'm supposed to do, work hard, and put the time in, and study hard. I know how to get there. But the world muddies our plans, um, our, what is so clear on paper, what seems so clear in our minds is not so clear when we start to live our lives. Get our friends come in. We see our friends just having a blast, running down these wide roads, okay, doing these um, jobs where most likely they're gonna continue to do these jobs for the rest of their lives, possibly. And um, do you, you got to look, do I want to be on this road? Do I want to be running down this road with these people? Um, 
I looked at the facts and I know what I need to do to get to where I want to be, but sometimes we allow our own desires. I want to have fun. I want to live for today. I hear a lot of kids say, I want to do whatever makes me happy today. Well, you're not going to get to the destination that you desire um, if you don't make the right choices. If you're on the wrong road, um, the road goes where it goes. You're not going to get there if you don't make that right choice. You got to stop and look at the big picture. You got to step back and see if the road you're on is going to get you where you want to be. And if you're not, get off the road. It's pretty simple. Um, there's a bunch of people running down the wide road. And sadly, we often know exactly where that road leads. Sadly, even as adults, we often still get on that road. Because it's a fun road. It's a wide road. It's an easy road. I don't have to do much. and get through life. I can look at people that have way more stuff than I do. And they're running down the wide road. But it's not really leading to the destination where we should want to be. So you might be thinking, well, I, I don't really know. I know that I can just punch in my GPS or read a map. I know how to get to Florida in my life. I kind of know what I want to do with my destination. But you might be thinking, I got my whole life ahead of me. I don't really care right now. I'm just going to have fun for a while. Well, um, I know some guys that did that as well. And sometimes a road that you take um, doesn't just take you to a different place, but it'll lead you there. And uh, sometimes it ends in a dangerous spot. And I know some folks that took some of these roads that went the wrong direction and they never had the opportunity to turn around. They never had the opportunity to come back. Um, the choices that they made came with consequences that ended their journey. So I'm not saying it's scary, I'm saying that as reality. So how do we do this? Well, whenever I have something really hard, if I wanna figure out something about marriage, if I wanna figure out something about um, work, if I want to figure out how finances work, if I want to figure out anything in life, God's got a plan for it. You got to read God's word. You got to read his plan. You got to get his word. So how do we how do we get on the right road? Um, how do we get where we want to be? Well, Proverbs, Proverbs 410, it's the first verse I want to read here this morning. This is Solomon speaking. Remember, Solomon is, um, wrote Proverbs, a lot of Proverbs anyway. And it's a book of wisdom. And so this is some wisdom that Solomon is giving to us. God speaking through Solomon. He says, listen, my son, accept what I say in the years of your life will be many. I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. Let's pause there. God has a plan and purpose for your life. Okay? He loves you. He has a plan and purpose for your life. In that scripture, God's telling you, accept what I tell you. Accept what I say. Accept the truth and then believe it. This is the truth. You can't wish it says something different because you don't agree with it. Okay, You can't say Ruth 3 is going to get to Florida. It doesn't go there. It's a fact. You can't read something in God's word and say, I know the Bible says that, but I don't believe that. For me, it's, I, I believe what, I, what we just did a few weeks ago on truth. You can go back on YouTube and watch the message on truth. We just covered all that. You can't change the truth in the Bible. Same today, tomorrow, yesterday. It'll be the same. It's the same. It's God's word. Truth does not change. So what Solomon just said in his words of wisdom, he says, when you believe, um, the years of your life will be many. Solomon says that God has clear instruction for us. He calls it the way of wisdom. So would you rather travel in the way of wisdom or in the way of foolishness? The way of wisdom or the way of desire? The way of wisdom or you throw a dart at a map and just go any direction you want. God will lead you down a straight path, is what Solomon says. So you go in the way of wisdom and he will lead you down a straight path. So that's how we, we get on it. You read the wisdom and then you follow that path. Okay, it's so simple, but it's so true. God's road goes where God's road goes. Solomon is saying here, choose God's path is the wise choice. So let's go back to the story where it's sitting at McDonald's over coffee, and you're telling me where you want to be in these various aspects of your life. And we know that you can only get there after I'm on, on, on the right road. So you might say to me, here's just a couple examples, you might say to me, well, in a few years, I, I, I'd like to be in a really loving relationship with somebody. In fact, I'd like to get married um, at some point in time, have a family, have, have kids. That's what I'd really like to do at some point in my life, um, sooner than later. Well, if that's your destination, then you can't choose to have a bunch of shallow, easy, meaningless relationships right now, like, like dates and hookups and all this relationship stuff, because that's going to throw consequences into your life in the future. 
or for sitting there in the coffee and saying to me, well, I want a, a, a really good career with good pay, good benefits, and plenty of opportunity for growth. Um, you can't just um, settle for a dead-end job right now. You can't just say, well, I'm just going to do this because I'm making really good money. Okay, when you're 17, really good money is different than when you're 40. Okay, it's different. So if you're if you're jumping into something because it's easy and fun and exciting, you're making a little money, you're paying your bills, whatever bills you have right now, enough to buy your car and pay for your phone maybe, um, that might not be the best choice. You gotta pick something. Yeah, you gotta work hard. Yeah, you work your way up, scrub toilets, mop the floors, stuff like that, you work your way up. I still scrub toilets and mop floors here. You gotta work your way up. Okay, you work your way up. Um, you have to get into a job where you have that opportunity for, for advancement. It goes for all of us. Then you gotta be willing to work hard, put in the time. And then you you choose those roads, you choose that path. You choose to say, I'm gonna put in the time and effort, um, learn what you need to learn. And then you say to me, well, I might wanna grow my relationship with God. I might wanna know Jesus more. Um, then I've heard people say, talking to myself at times, I wanna get up early, I wanna read the Bible more, I wanna get into the word more, I wanna to come to worship more, I wanna grow closer to God. Well, then you can't get up early and put your Bible down and just pull out your phone and go on TikTok or Facebook or whatever it is for you, Instagram, for the next hour and then wonder why you're no closer to God than you were a year and a half's gone by now since graduation or a year and a half's gone by since I've been in this um, on this road wondering why I'm here. You got to choose roads that go where you want to go. So that was um, Solomon talking. Jesus talks a lot about roads. I'm going to wrap this up. Jesus talks a lot about roads. Matthew 7, 13. Jesus says this, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Let's pause here. Jesus is telling us, look, Jesus cuts right to the chase. He's saying there's only two roads. Yeah, there's a lot of choices, a lot of little roads. And like, there's really only two roads that matter in life. There's only two destinations. One road is, is wide. One road is broad. One road is narrow. One road is easy to run down. Everyone seems to be running down. The broad road, broad road leads to what? Death and destruction. That's what Jesus said. Pain, suffering, consequences. Poor consequences. The narrow road, the road that few are walking down, leads to what? Life. Only a few find it, Jesus says. Two, the two big important things we need to remember what, what road are you on? And Jesus is now telling us there's only two roads. We gotta sit back and, and think, what road am I on, really? What road should I be on? And maybe you're not sure how to get on this narrow road. Maybe you think, well, I know I should be following Jesus. That's the Sunday school answer. Jesus is the answer. But it's not that easy in real life. How do I do it? How do I follow him? How, how do I make that right choice? Well, Jesus tells us again, John 14, 6. He's sitting around with his disciples. And they're having this similar discussion. And Thomas, one of the disciples, asked Jesus a question. He says, how can we know the way? And Jesus answers him. John 14, 6. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, that is some really valuable information for all of us. And it's a warning for all of us as well. Given to us out of love. Information given to us out of love. A warning given to us out of love. We sang that song. He'll never leave the one behind. He's giving us this opportunity. You got to know where you are. You got to know where you want to be. And here Jesus is saying, I'm the way. Follow me. You don't, you don't know what road to take? Follow me. I'm the way. I'm the choice. You want to know life? You want to really know what life is all about? Know me. You want to know truth? Know me is what Jesus said. I am truth. You want to know the way? Follow me. Choose me. Choose my road, Jesus is saying. Only my road goes to where my road goes, to the Father. Life's full of roads. Life's full of choices. 
Roads go where they go. And when you read the Bible, when you study, when you pray, you're going to learn so many different truths. When you start to read in here, you're going to just, sometimes you feel overwhelmed with what you read. But there's one truth in this Bible that you're going to read from cover to cover. It's more than a thread. It's like a rope that ties cover to cover. It runs through every single book in the Bible. There's one message that just screams off these pages. And it's, I love you. God says, I love you. I don't want you making these poor choices. I don't want you running down these roads that are going to cause pain and suffering. Not just for you, but for your children and the next generation, possibly for your lineage. We talked about that last week in Father's Day. The choices you make, the roads that you choose today can change the tra trajectory of your family for generations. And you might be that first person in your family that's hugging onto the rock of Christ, saying, I choose to follow you. And then generations after you will be linked to the chain, linked to Jesus by your chain. Or, like I said, I was a seventh generation. I went home after I did the message last week and I found a whole box of stuff from my mother when she passed away and I read through there. I found an eighth generation on the paper that he wrote. The eighth generation was a believer in Jesus Christ. And what he said eight generations ago is that um, Christians better wake up. And they better start sharing. And he wrote this little pamphlet that I'm going to bring in. Some of us won't be able to listen to it. Because it would cause us to make too many changes. But eight generations ago, in my lineage, this guy said, we need to stand up and be a church. We need to follow Jesus. We need to do what he says. Go where he goes. Act like he acts. Love like he loves. Or we're going to be in trouble. The wide road is easy. The narrow road is not. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. God wants us to, He loves us so much, He wants us to love Him back. He wants us to, to choose Him. He wants us to choose His plan. He wants us to listen to Him, accept what He has to say, accept His truth, and then obey it. Because this truth can't be changed. By your desires and feelings, this truth will only go where it goes. He gave you the map, the Bible. He gave you Jesus as an example for us to follow. We have the written word to read and learn and grow by. And then he loved us so much, he's like, here's Jesus, follow him. Do what he says, Jesus says, follow me. And then go tell others. And that's what we're supposed to do. It boils down to two roads, Jesus says. Only two options. Only two choices, the wide road or the narrow. So what do we need to do? Figure out where you are. I'm going to leave you with two questions. Over the next few years, we're going to graduate younger folks. You're going to have so many crossroads in life. Older folks, we're still going to have so many crossroads in life. I'm going to leave you with two questions. First question. Remember I said you need to know where you are, where you want to be, how you're going to get there? First question. What road are you on right now? Is the road that you're on right now, is that going to get you to your destination? That's the first question. Where are you? What road are you on? What road are you running down? Why are you running down that road? What's the purpose of it? Is it going to get you where you want to be? Second question. If you find yourself on the wrong road, are you willing to turn around and go back? Pick a different road. Head in a new direction. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Father, we thank you that your word is simple. Your, your word is, is truth. Father, we thank you that your, your word is um, sometimes in layers. And as we read it, it's not like taking a layer away. It's like adding a layer to it. That the more we read, the more we learn, the more we see the stuff gets added on top. And it's not more that we have to do. It's, it's more layers of love. All these examples is how much you love us. You have these plans and purpose for us. You don't want us running down these roads to death and destruction that's going to ruin our, our lineage, possibly for generations to come. You want the best for us. That's why you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for the penalty that I deserve, that we all deserved. All you have to do is believe in him. Choose him. Follow him. Father, I thank you so much that you make it so clear to us. You gave us the map life. You gave us your Bible. You gave us your written word. 
and you gave us Jesus as an example to follow. Father, I pray that each and every person here goes back and just thinks about this. Is the road I'm on today, is it going to get me where I want to be? Is the road I'm on today going to get me closer to God? Father, we thank you for all this so much more in Jesus' name. Amen. Elijah, you learn.